This form factor of 6 to 36 volt and 10 to 30 volt digital Hall effect inductive proximity sensors will work on 3D printers running off of 5 volts. There's no need to tap into a 12 volt line. Not only that, the 6 to 36 volt version will work to detect glass with aluminum tape backing it. Watch the rest of this video and I'll prove it. This is a Ramps 1.4 shield on top of an Arduino Mega. It is plugged in to 5 volt power through the USB. This is a Hall Effect proximity sensor. So this is your inductive proximity sensor type. Now this is slightly different than what a lot of people use with the threaded barrels. Um, this is just a different form factor, but it's the same type, of, same type of sensor. So if I hold this up to the camera here, you can see that this is a 10 to 30 volt sensor. This is just a chunk of aluminum and it is 3.33 millimeters thick. You'll know that when the switch is activated based on this red light. Coming together here, boom, there's the light. So you can see the gap, there is plenty gap there. Um, so guesstimating what that gap is, looks about a 2.5 millimeter to me. Same form factor, but this one is a six to 36 volt focus on that. So I'm going to plug this one in and just like so. Again, these are all plugged into the um, Z axis uh, limit switch slot on the Ramps 1.4 board. So if you can see that gap, I would say it's about 4 to 4.5, maybe 4.25, just guessing there. I mean, just eyeballing it. So, but you can definitely see more of a gap with the 6 to 36 volt sensor. So as the sensitivity, the voltage sensitivity decreases on the, on the sensors, then the, uh, the gap widens. This is the Troncy 802E machine. And you can see back here, I have one of the 10 to 30 volt sensors installed. So let's run the bed leveling function here. It's going to take nine points off the bed, we've all seen this before, but using this sensor uh, it works just fine. Because of that two millimeter gap, I'm able to uh, have two millimeters of height difference between when the nozzle is basically touching the bed or you know printing its layer and then two millimeters higher than that is where the sensor sits. Now if I put the calipers on it, let's wait for it to move here, but if I put the calipers on this bed, it comes out to 3.15 millimeters thick. Now, that's a little bit thinner than the piece of aluminum which I was using a minute ago uh, to do the, uh, the test between the two different sensors. And also that includes the um, underneath is uh, the heating element and a coating, a plastic coating. And so that, that 3.15 millimeters also includes that thickness. So probably this is three millimeters, maybe 2.85 millimeters thick aluminum, and it still has no problem detecting it. Now this is literally aluminum foil with an adhesive backing, and then the paper which you peel off when you want to stick the aluminum down. This comes in rolls, it's used for duct work, you can get it at your local hardware store. I've taken a piece of that tape and I've stuck it to the back side of this piece of glass. Now this is my printer bed off of my GTEC i3 clone. When I take the 6 to 36 volt sensor and lower it down towards the glass, the light comes on. I have about two more millimeters before I hit the glass. Once it comes on, I can go down. So now we have the 10 to 30 volt sensor and we know that it's working because it's detecting the chunk of aluminum, but it will not detect the aluminum foil through the plate glass. So the 10 to 30 volt sensor is no good for this application. Okay, so why am I making this video um, so in depth when the opening line should be all the information that anybody needs? The reason is that five days ago, Thomas Sandilar released a video called um, Auto Leveling on 3D Printers. It's a fantastic video, full of great information, all of his videos are, and I'm going to link the video in the description down below. But the problem is in his video, Tom explicitly says that a 6 to 36 volt inductive sensor running on 5 volts will not work. He also says that you can't get a reading 
off of glass with aluminum tape backing it. So if I'm going to contradict Tom, I better come with some proof and some good reasoning. I already provided the proof, so now I have to provide the reasoning. And get ready, this is a little bit heady and I have to read it off the screen here. A magnetic field flowing through metal will generate a flow of electricity through the metal. Also, and conversely, electricity flowing through metal will generate a magnetic field. Aluminum is a non-ferrous metal, so we don't call it magnetic. But by flowing electricity through aluminum, we can magnetize it. By exposing aluminum to a magnetic field, we generate a flow of electricity, which in turn generates a magnetic field. It's a kind of feedback loop. Um, also in the description down below, I'm going to link to a video where a guy drops a very powerful neodymium magnet through an aluminum tube and the magnet falls very slowly. This feedback loop is the cause of that slow falling behavior. Another way to describe the feedback loop is to say that it causes a change in the overall magnetic flux. Well, Detecting changes in magnetic flux is the job of a digital Hall effect sensor. Basically, the sensor flips a switch on and off based on a certain preset threshold of magnetic flux. So we can use the voltage rating printed on the switches as a rough indicator of that preset threshold. The higher the voltage number, the less sensitive the switch is and the closer that it needs to get to the bed in order to trigger the switch. Here's the thing though, um, 3D printers use heated beds. Heating up a metal changes the electrical conductivity of the metal. But worse than that, the bed heaters use electricity and as we already covered, electricity flowing through metal creates a magnetic field. So these two factors combine to throw off the reading of the Hall effect sensor. So if we have a sensitive sensor and we calibrate it on a cold bed, once we turn the heated bed on, it will throw off the reading and our Z height uh, will be inaccurate. By having a uh, less sensitive sensor like this 10 to 30 volt sensor, it means that we need to get a closer reading, but it also means that those variations caused by turning the bed heater on uh, are not going to throw off the sensor. So put in simple terms, the less sensitive inductive sensors are more accurate for detecting heated aluminum beds on 3D printers. Not only will this uh, 10 to 30 volt sensor work, it's in fact your best option if you have an aluminum heated bed, in theory anyway. Um, I'm gonna leave the science up to Tom. He's got a great testing apparatus and he should use it to test this form factor of inductive Hall effect sensors. He should test a cold bed and then a hot bed uh, with the electricity running through it. That's all well and fine, but let's be practical here. What type of sensor should you get? That depends on the type of 3D printer that you have. If you have a 3D printer with a heated aluminum bed like this Troncy here, or an ANET A8, you will want to get the 10 to 30 volt sensor. This sensor will have a closer detection distance and it will be less variable when the bed is turned on versus when the bed is turned off. That means you can calibrate your printer with a cold bed and still get an accurate reading once the bed gets turned on. On the other hand, if you have a i3 clone. Now you will know these printers because they come with this non-metallic PCB bed heater. They also come with this sheet of glass that goes on top of the bed heater. Okay, so if you want one of, if you have one of these, you'll want to get the 6 to 36 volt sensor because you can coat the glass with this aluminum tape and the sensor will be able to detect the, gla uh, the tape through the glass. So you can still get that really smooth print on the glass, which is fantastic, and also be able to have inductive proximity sensing on your printer. Okay, that's it for this video. This is a brand new channel, video number four, and I've got lots of great stuff coming. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Thanks for watching.